Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here, and today I want to talk to you about pivot tables. Pivot tables are a really powerful way to do analysis of your data. Um, it's a little not obvious at first why you would want to use them and how to use them and what they're for, but once you start with them, you sort of see the opportunities everywhere. And if you're coming from another system, especially Excel, uh, and you're new to Python, you're new to Pandas, then you probably don't need to be convinced that pivot tables are amazing, but you might not know how to do them. So here we're going to cover all those bases. So first I'm going to say import numpy as np and import pandas as pd and from pandas import import series and data frame. It's my like standard things to load up. And I'm going to say df equals pd read csv. I'm going to say here it's going to be in uh, consult. Oh, that's going to be, sorry, it's going to be courses current data. And then I'm going to say here that's going to be the Olympic data. There we go, Olympic athlete events. And this will take a few moments to load up. This is a data frame I use quite a bit in my courses and in my book. And if we can see here that it's uh, about 270,000 rows and about 15 columns, exactly 15 columns. And if we see here, what are the columns? Well, let's just do a DF head. This is all the data for all the Olympic Games, summer and winter, that have taken place. I think it's until 2016. I could be a little off on that. And it shows us all the athletes, athlete, sex, age, height, weight, team, uh, I guess the name of the country, which games, the year, season, city, sport, event, and then the medal. Okay, you know, so far so good. What if I want to know is this, you know, what was the average height uh, of athletes, you know, of Olympic, Olympic athletes? And that's pretty easy, right? I say df of height dot mean. Great. So now we know that the average height of an Olympic athlete over all the years was 175 centimeters. So far, so good. How about this? What was the average height of Olympic athletes per year? Oh, well, that gets a little tricky, right? So now I'm going to say df group by year height dot mean. Now, I have another video about group by. So if you're not familiar with that, you should definitely take a look at that. But what are we doing here? We're saying for each year, for each distinct value of year, what was the average height? What was the mean height? And we get that for each year in the system. So it's going to say, what was the average height for all the rows in 1896? All the average height for all the rows in 1900, 1904, 1906, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so this is what we're doing here with grouping. But what if I want to do this? What was the average height of athletes per year and per country? Oh, that gets a little more interesting, right? So I don't just want to know in 1900, in 1980, in 1996, what was the average height. I want to know for each distinct country, for each distinct year, and for each distinct country, which I guess would be team here, right? What was the average height? And that's how you have to think about a pivot table. What we have here is categorical data. And we have here also categorical data. And we want to say that for each distinct value here of the year, for each distinct value of the team, we can set up a table. And then the average height will be the values in the middle, you know, in that table. How do we do that? We can create a pivot table. That is a pivot table. So I can say here df, because I'm still working with df my data frame, pivot table. And then I'm going to say here index equals year, meaning that the rows of the data frame we're going to create are going to be the distinct values of the years. And I'm going to say here columns equals team, meaning that the distinct values of team are going to be our columns. And then I'm going to say here values equals height. And so if I do this, I'm going to get a new data frame, and it's going to show me all of the different you know, combinations here. Now you'll notice that there are an awful lot of NANs here. So I'm just going to do here a uh, drop NAN, drop NA. Well, that might have been a little extreme, huh? So let's do drop NA, and we'll say thresh. Well, actually, let's just get the shape of this first. And we can see that it has 35 rows. So there are 35 distinct years in our Olympic records, and 699, let's call, let's call it 700, 700 distinct teams. That's quite a lot. So what we're going to do here is say drop NA, and we'll say thresh equals, let's call it, uh, you know, 10. 
All right. Well, that's good. Okay, we still got a lot of nans here. I'm going to show you one other thing in a little bit. But you can see then that here we have in 1964 for... Achepaktli, I'm terrible pronouncing these things, for Afghanistan, let's say Afghanistan, easier to uh, pronounce. So 1964, the average height of Afghanistan um, uh, athletes was 161 centimeters. And in Aleta, it was 176 centimeters in 1960, and so on and so forth. We could really get this sort of cross um, calculation and comparison here. Let's try something a little different. What if I don't say team? What if I say sport? What if I say here, sport? And let's just get this. Oh, it doesn't say, oh, I'm sorry. It actually wanted, I guess, event. Oh, what do we have here? DF columns. I always forget the names here. Event. Oh, I don't want the values. No, I don't want the values are going to be height. Columns equals, let's do this. Let's do sport. Helps to actually pay attention to what you're doing, right? And here, it's a much, much smaller thing because there are fewer events. So if I do a dot shape here, here it's going to be 35 events. So I'm going to say here, drop an A, thresh equals, let's call it 30. And so what do we see now? For each year and for each different sport, all the events in that sport, what was the average height? Right? So we see that in archery, right, the average height has stayed roughly the same over the years, 172 centimeters up to 173. In basketball, it's gotten a little taller from 189 centimeters to 191, 192 centimeters. Right? I don't think it's ever going to get shorter. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know that much about sports. I'm a programmer. I'm not supposed to know that much about it. In weightlifting, we can see actually they have gotten shorter, right? 168 centimeters down to 166 centimeters. Not massive, but I mean, they, I guess they are massive. They're doing weightlifting, but that's a different sort of massive. All right, so that's how we can basically use pivot tables. Now, you might be saying, wait, how would I actually use this? Why would I use this in my work? Well, imagine that you have sales records for your online store, and you have the different regions, and you have the different categories of products. So you can see what was the average sale, you know, how much did we sell on average, um, you know, what was the average you know, price, let's say, per month per sales region or per sales region per category. As long as you have categorical data, you can use one for the index, one for the columns, and then you ask for the mean. But wait, what if we don't want the mean? What if we want something else, right? I want the max, not the mean. So I can change that here. I can say here, um, ag funk equals max. And now we will know what was the tallest athlete's height in each sport for each year. All right, so we see here, right, in archery, right, the tallest one started at 189 and they got up 194. Truly giants, right? And tennis went from 203 to 204. Not a big difference there. What if you want to have multiple aggregation functions? Well, then instead of passing a string here, and you can pass a function, not just a string, but for the built-in things, you can pass a string. You can pass a list of strings. We can do here mean comma max. And then you know what we get? Look at this. We basically get a multi-index. We get a hierarchical column listing here where mean for all these things and then max for all these things. Then we can pull out whatever is of interest to us. So I hope you can see how incredibly powerful a pivot table can be. Again, you need to have category, two types of categorical data, and you're sort of making them match up now to get a subset of your data, be able to see trends and interesting things there. All right? Um, I hope this was useful. I hope it was interesting. I hope it clarified things. If you have questions, comments, whatever, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Twitter. You can get me on email. And never forget, never forget, that I won't just be back here with more videos, but I've also got my free weekly Better Developers newsletter where I talk about Python and other related things. I will be back here soon. Thanks for watching.